Now, apparently, keto now causes bone loss. And this is based on a study that was done, which I'm going to cover. A woman on my YouTube channel brought this up, and she was a bit concerned if she should start keto because she's going through menopause, and the last thing she needs is to lose her bones. All right, let's go through the actual study. I'm going to put a link down below so you can read it as well. There's a couple red flags about this study. Number one, the study wasn't done on random people. It was done on 30 world-class professional endurance athletes. And it was only done for three weeks. That's the time of the study that they used to determine that keto causes bone loss. And of course, the media is going to pick this up and run with it. Now, what do you have to realize with an athlete, especially a world-class athlete, is that their bodies are usually carb-burning machines. They're used to it. And if you're going to adapt to the ketogenic diet and start oxidizing fat, that's going to take a lot more than three weeks, especially when you're an athlete. If you take an average person who's sedentary, it might be three days, but when you're actively pushing your body hardcore, an endurance athlete is constantly tapping out their glycogen reserve, and if they don't replace it, they can literally pass out. And so the enzymes and the mechanism and the machinery of adapting to burning fat could take months. And in other studies, which the long distance uh, runners are doing keto, it takes literally a year or two of training until the point where they're fat burning machines, they're oxidizing fat. And in fact, their bodies can burn three times as much fat than anyone else. It's quite incredible. There's also two ultra marathon runners that I know. One was at my summit and these guys run a hundred miles and both of them are keto. I'll put a link down below. All right, now in the study, it showed impaired bone modeling and remodeling, but it didn't show a loss of bone mineral density or strength. Okay, that's a big difference. So really the only thing that showed up was impaired bone modeling and remodeling. That does not mean osteoporosis. That does not mean osteopenia. But the biggest red flag, I think, of the entire study is they didn't include what the diet was. Was it really keto? Was it dirty keto? Did they have enough vitamin K2, which builds bone? Did they have enough vitamin D3? What about calcium or even vitamin C? We don't know because they didn't list what they ate. And so to build bone, you need the combination of all those vitamins and minerals, and you got to keep your stress low and your hormones in check. On the flip side, I'm going to put a link down below of a long-term study, 12 months, performed on menopausal women, which indicated no effect on bone. Thanks for watching. And, you know, if you see studies like this in the news, read them before you jump to any conclusions. Today, I'd like to discuss the most common micronutrient deficiency that can keep you on the short side. Personally, growing up, um, I think my growth was stunted through wrestling. I wrestled uh, junior high school, high school, and I started college until I fractured my neck. But for about three years, I actually went through cycles of literally starving myself to make weight. I think that stunted my growth. And I'm only 6'2". Now you might say, well, you're only 6'2", but yeah, but my dad's 6'5", my younger brother is 6'7", my mom is 6 foot, no, I'm just kidding, she's 5'8". So if you're a teenager and you starve yourself, you know, especially three years in a row, that can have an influence on your nutrition. Most stunted growth is related to malnutrition. It is so important in the beginning years of life that you have all the essential nutrients. I'm talking about protein, I'm talking about vitamins, minerals, healthy fats, because as this relates to growth and development, not just your height, but organs and tissues. If you're deficient in iodine, for example, it can affect your cognitive function. If you're deficient in zinc, you can definitely be shorter as well. If you have some problem with your pituitary, that's going to affect your height because the pituitary controls something called growth hormone. But generally speaking, girls generally have a growth spurt between 10 years old and 14 and boys between 12 and 15. But if we take a look at growth, we're going to talk about all of the things. We're going to talk about the protein, talk about vitamins and minerals, 
and we're going to talk about hormones. Let's start with hormones, okay? In a child, growth hormone primarily helps you grow. It helps your bones grow, helps your muscles grow, helps your height. But then when you become an adult, growth hormone has other functions. It keeps and preserves protein on your body. It's anti-aging. It helps you with weight loss. And there's several things about growth hormone I want to talk about. Number one, it's stimulated by amino acids, protein. If you're not consuming enough quality protein, your growth hormone can be diminished. If you have a high sugary diet, if you have high blood glucose, or you have insulin resistance, if you don't sleep enough, growth hormone is made by your pituitary, goes to your liver, and then your liver makes insulin-like growth factor number one. Now, this hormone, if deficient, can definitely make you shorter. And this hormone is also triggered by a good amount of amino acids and zinc. You know, how could you become deficient in zinc? Number one, not consuming enough foods high in zinc. And of all the foods that are high in zinc, we have red meat, other animal meats, we have fish, shellfish, and there's not a lot of zinc in plant foods, especially grains, and especially corn, especially cassava, especially rice. And if we just take a look at the country that has the highest zinc deficiency, that would be in Africa, the Republic of Congo. And I'm primarily talking about children and mothers. Now, why would that be? Because if you look at their diet, it's mostly composed of rice, corn, grains, and cereals, okay? Now, what's the common denominator of all of those? It's phytic acid. It's a certain chemical that blocks zinc, creating a, a massive zinc deficiency, which can affect the immune system. Okay, what are some other things that can create a deficiency of zinc? Stress, sugar, eating junk food, that was me. Now, I also mentioned something related to sugar, insulin resistance. Most of the population has insulin resistance, and that can create an effect on your growth as well, because the insulin receptor has another function that goes beyond just the regulation of blood sugars. It helps you absorb nutrients. This is why when someone goes on the ketogenic diet and starts to repair this insulin resistance, and now insulin becomes more sensitive, they start having a healing effect with their muscles. Another important nutrient is vitamin D. Vitamin D is another really common deficiency uh, simply because, first of all, kids don't go outside much anymore. It's almost impossible to get from your diet. All the junk food inhibits it, and the inflammation in our guts block the absorption of vitamin D. All of these things influence your growth hormone and your IGF number one, which is the insulin-like growth factor. So if you have a child that has stunted growth, I would definitely um, implement some of these strategies. And there's one more uh, thing that I used in practice that seemed to work very well because your pituitary is at the heart and anything you can do to support the pituitary would be a good thing. There is one product that Standard Process uh, sold when I was in practice that uh, seemed to really work. It seemed to help children grow a lot more in a short period of time. And it's called Pituitrophin PMG. I would definitely recommend that, maybe one before bed for maybe three months, just to optimize the potential for a child's growth. Now, since we're on the topic of zinc, there's a lot more to learn. If you have not seen this very interesting video on zinc, I put it up right here. Check it out.